Hello guys, welcome to my server rack setup tour. I've been meaning to do this for a long time now, but I've kept putting it off because I've always been waiting for something to arrive. Well, here I am many somethings later in no video, so I thought it's a good time to do it now. I'll start by going over everything first, then I'll go into details of each section. From the top of my rack, you have my network equipment, below that is my Cisco lab, then my servers, and finally at the bottom you have my power systems. It's all housed in an APC NetShelter SX rack. My main router is an Ubiquiti Edge Router Pro. I have Bell 5 gigabit internet with the fiber line going directly into the router. It was quite difficult to figure out how to get third-party routers working with Bell 5, but once I found that they simply run internet on VLAN 35, I was able to get it working fine, without their terrible hardware in between. I do plan on upgrading my router to the Unify Security Gateway XG once it's released. Below that you have a neat patch cable organizer. I don't have a patch panel in the rack because the majority of the connections are internal, and with this being my home setup it's more flexible without one. Finally onto the switch. It's a Unify Switch 48 port, 500 watt. I used to be running the edge switch of the same model, but it met an untimely death a few months ago. But that's fine because I much prefer the analytics of the Unify system anyways. I'm also planning on getting a Unify Switch XG to play around with 10 gigabit networking in the future. Right below my main network is my Cisco lab. I work in enterprise IT, and as much as I don't like Cisco, I'm forced to use them, so it's important for me to know how to. My lab consists of a 2851 router that I use as my backhaul and access server to access the rest of the routers and switches, then two 2811s and an 1841 router. I then have two 3560 switches and an old 2950 that I've had kicking around for years. On to my servers. Starting from the top, I have a Dell KMM that unfortunately rarely gets used. My main server is a Dell PowerEdge R410. This is running VMware ESXi and runs pretty much everything in my house. My main NAS is a PowerEdge R510. It's loaded with eight 4TB drives in a RAID 6 configuration, giving me about 22TB usable space. I do plan on upgrading this to run ESXi in the future as well, but unfortunately I have nowhere to put all my data temporarily while I perform the upgrade. The next device right below it should help with that though. It's a Dell PowerVelt TL2000 tape library. I picked it up for cheap a while ago, sold for parts only, but I was able to fix everything that was broken with it and it works great now. Unfortunately, it only came with an LTO3 drive and it was not working, but with LTO8 drive starting to be released, the price of LTO7 is starting to come down and I was able to pick up an LTO7 drive recently. With that, I'll finally be able to have multiple backups of my data. Below that, you have my only sort of custom built server in the rack. It's an ASUS server board with dual Xeons in a super micro case, but I don't actually use it for anything at the moment. I do have ESXi loaded on it, so it's good to go whenever I need it. Finally, you have my first server I ever bought. It's an HP ProLiant DL380. I really only have it in my rack for sentimental reasons, and it's not even connected at all. Moving down to the bottom, you have my power setup. I have a couple of StarTech PDUs around the rack and an APC 1500 VA UPS. On the back, all of my cables are color-coded. The red cables are on the UPS, and the blue cables are on the PDU with no backup. The yellow cables are from my lab, also with no backup. In the servers, I have one power supply on the UPS and one on the PDUs, and the main network equipment is on the UPS as well. The lab equipment is running on an APC switchable PDU, so I can turn on and off each device remotely. The UPS and PDUs are also on their own separate breaker here in my condo, so one can trip while the other one still provides power. In total, when everything is running, it uses about 660 watts of power. With my peak electric rate, I'll pay about $14 a month, which isn't too bad at all. The last thing I want to cover is the cabling going out from my server rack to the rest of my condo. One of the first things I always do when I move into a new place is run cables. My current condo when I moved in had five lines of Cat5 already run, but it was terminated as RJ11 for phone. I ran additional six lines of Cat6 plus the fiber to get it back to my rack location, and I terminated everything with RJ45 and a small patch panel. I will leave all of these lines in place, as well as the patch panel when I leave. It's a nice touch for anyone moving into a condo, as they never have anything like this in place, usually either unterminated cables or just a big splock. Well, that was a basic overview of my server rack. I hope you enjoyed. I know I've spent a lot of time watching similar videos on YouTube over the years. I'll try to do update videos when I get new things, but I've never been good at that. And let me know if you have any questions or comments down below.